Photo composition is one of the biggest components to setting up a great photo. Before we get into today's video, I would really appreciate it if you guys could sign up to my newsletter on my new website. I've got some big things planned, and if you guys sign up now, you guys will be the first to know. Now, let's get into it. When I first started photography, I would just point and shoot, which is not bad, but there's lots more things you can do to take a better shot. The first thing that I'm going to be talking about is the rule of thirds. Now you may have heard this term before and it may be like, what, I have to follow a rule in photography? It's not true, that's just the name of this trick, I guess you could say. It's a pretty simple one and it's not mandatory in every shot because it can ruin shots in certain settings, but it helps with like portrait photography, that kind of stuff. So to use the rule of thirds, we want our subject to line up with one or more corners of the intersecting grid lines on our camera. This puts your subject on one of the thirds and leaves quote unquote empty space for the other two thirds. Now you may think this is simple, but it can really change up the photo and add more depth to it. The second thing that we can do in composing our shot is using leading lines. While leading lines are used a lot in architectural and landscape photography, you can use it in almost any photography. It's a very simple and subtle trick that can change how people see your photos. Leading lines can help draw attention to a certain point or your subject in the shot. So for example, if you look at this photo I took on the highway, most of the people that will see this image will follow the lines on the road towards the center of the image. And those lines are leading lines. Leading lines can work well with rule thirds and many different ways. You just gotta look for them when you're setting up your shot. The next tip that I have for you is to fill the frame. Oftentimes photographer leave too much empty space in their photos. This is very noticeable in nature and product photography. So take for example this picture of this cup. It just looks better when it's zoomed in and not so zoomed out with a bunch of empty space around it. Now I'm not saying like zoom in on your object like crazy. You can still have space around it. And sometimes even if the subject of your photo is clipping the frame of the photo, that can be all right. Just you don't want any major clipping. So just be careful when you do fill the frame in photography because sometimes it can really mess up your image or sometimes it can really make the image better. Now the last thing that I'm going to talk about, and it's one of the more obvious things, but some people don't realize it in the beginning, is to declutter your background. Take for example, you're shooting portraits or a subject in the city. There's lots of moving and distracting things in the background and we wanna keep attention on our subject. Now, one of the easiest ways to declutter your background is by blurring your background. Now, you can do that by turning down your aperture as much as you need. You can also try to blur your background in post, which can be a little hard masking your subject, but it's an option. Just remember that you don't always need to blur your background because you may have leading lines or more simple background behind your subject. And that's it. There's lots more ways that you can compose your shot, but these were just the more simple ways to do that. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, if you guys could please sign up to my newsletter on my site, I would really appreciate it. I have some big things planned and the people that sign up will be the first to know what's going to happen. In the meantime, like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching the video. I'll see you guys later. Peace.